Grace and peace. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. My name is Chris Bailey, and we're so glad that you're making us a part of your day, because in this series, we're going to talk about church organization and unity, how the two do go together based on what we have in the word. So before we get started, let's begin with a word of prayer. And Father, we ask that you please speak to us through your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Servant leadership has taken a lot of different forms and identities over the years because so many people seem to even specialize in being leaders. But the good news is that there is an example that we have that has not changed and it's proven to be true. And that's the life of Jesus Christ. And when you look at Christ, what you recognize is the thought or the idea of how God thinks. So when I look at Jesus, the only qualification in the eyes of God for a leader is a desire to serve. Go and look at Mark 9, for example, in verse 33 to 34. The Bible says, and he, Jesus, came to Capernaum and being in the house, he asked them, what was it that you disputed among yourselves by the way? But they, the disciples, held their peace for by the way they had disputed amongst themselves who should be the greatest. Now, you know, in the argument that they were having of who should be the greatest, they were using different reasons why they should be in charge or why they should be the greatest. But with all of these accolades or with all of these bullet points on their resumes that they were throwing at each other, Jesus makes it very clear. And Matthew chapter 20, verse 25, where he called unto them, unto him and said, you know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them and they that are great exercise authority upon them. You know this because this is how and what you all use to argue why you should be leaders. But in verse 26, it shall not be so among you. So basically take whatever the world says, whatever you find on LinkedIn, whatever anybody advises you from the nearest uh, career services center, do the opposite. Jesus said, it's not so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. So really, if you think about it, the idea of servant leadership is redundant in God's eyes because a leader is a servant. It's like saying servant, servant or leader, leader. Jesus talked the talk and he walked the walk because in verse 28, he says, even as, in other words, just like me, even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. You could say in verse 28, even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to lead. And to give his life a ransom for many, because the way that Jesus leads is that he serves. Notice how I say that in the present tense, even now, not when he was just here on earth, but even as he ministers for us in the heavenly sanctuary. Why is he there? He is high priest. He is chief. But why is he there? He's there for you and for me. He leads to serve. And he does not serve to win leadership. He is the leader. So you need to understand this. Wherever your call is, wherever God has put you, wherever he's planted you, you don't have to be a boss to be a leader. You don't have to be the supervisor to be in charge. You don't have to be a principal to be the principal where you are. Because the principle that you live is that you serve. Because that's all he's looking for. If you're praying right now and asking for God to do something more for you, to put you in a new place, you're looking for another job or looking for a job, period. Remember, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't worry about what's written on a piece of paper. Worry about what's written in your heart and ask the Lord to put you where your character and where your gifts will not just bring you glory, not just pay your rent, but will again serve other people. I believe if we start to pray this, we'll find ourselves not just called, but qualified and not just qualified and not just called, but we'll find ourselves changing places and not just taking spaces. With that in mind, we want to pray that all of us will know that there's a place that he has for you. If you ever doubt that, then that's to doubt the reason why he made you. 
He made you for a reason and he wants to use you for a reason to be not in charge, but to be change where you are. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. If you were blessed by this study, please make sure you click that button that says like and share with someone else. Because when you do that, that makes it easier for someone else to run into this video too. And if you were blessed, please, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so we can stay in touch.